Good morning, everyone. Okay. So yeah, we'll just do a quick introduction. I'm Justin Toller from Jable. I'm a, a, one of our former architects. Uh, I'm Madan Santaram. Uh, I'm an engineering director at, at AMI. Yeah. yeah, I'm Tuarka Pertani. I uh, from Aspeed. All right. Um, so to kick things off today, we want to discuss a little bit about DCMHS, why a modular architecture is valuable. Uh, we're going to give a quick overview of one of the DCMHS platforms from Jable that has been used for this effort, and also the, the AMI and ASP collaboration with uh, ASP's DCSEM 2.0 card and AMI's Root of Trust firmware. So uh, we'll, we'll also cover composable hardware um, and, and platform Root of Trust role within in the uh, total infrastructure, and, and then the total platform Root of Trust support, and then we'll have a call to action at the end. So. Um, so, so why provide a, a modular architecture? What, what's the value of that in a, a modern data center? What, what are we trying to achieve with this? So really what we're looking for is to provide um, uh, <clears throat> a lot of hardware interoperability across multiple vendors. What this allows is a, a more competitive marketplace. If one vendor brings uh, out an HPM that's targeted at a specific solution, that can be adopted and brought into a chassis leveraging another vendor's components. So this, this brings a lot of value. It's a faster time to market on a solution. You don't have to wait for a single vendor to bring the entire solution together. We can leverage components from different vendors. It also improves component reuse across different vendors. So <clears throat> if we are trying to adopt and just upgrade an HPM within a platform to get the next generation of silicon, but we want to reserve, say, our mid-planes for our drives, we, we can do that. Or if we want to reuse our DCSCM card, now we don't have that design time included to be able to bring the platform to life, and this will shorten the overall design cycle. It's also going to increase the flexibility of server capabilities. So as I initially mentioned, um, being able to adopt different components from different vendors will provide a larger selection of capabilities that can be built into a, a composable server. Um, we're also going to provide consistent expectations of server design and management. So with DCMHS, the, the goal is to define the form factors, and now we gain all, all this different reusability. We're defining some of the management interfaces, and, and this is going to help improve the overall manageability and expectations of server components um, within the industry. So for component reuse, um, this is going to also drive uh, data center sustainability. So what this means is now with component reuse, we're reusing designs, we'll, we'll see better cost optimizations across the board. We're, we're going to see potentially longer lifespans on some of the server components that don't change as frequently as the HPMs. So our overall objective and goal here, we wanted to showcase the DCMHS platform design and architecture and show the interoperability between components and also being able to bring on different firmware across that modular architecture. So in this case, we, we brought on the, the platform root of trust from AMI on uh, an ASP 1060 part of root of trust solution. So we're also going to demonstrate vendor agnostic platform root of trust. Um, so, so um, Madan here is going to go through yep. the, the, that entire section. He'll take us through the, the platform root of trust solution, its capabilities, and then how they were able to bring that onto the hardware. And then we're going to depict some of the, the firmware management and orchestration services um, for, for scaling cross-vendor modular hardware. So Madan's also going to talk to that, that piece as well. Um, and then uh, Dvorka here is going to cover the specific uh, ASB DCSCM solution um, reference design that they had. So as a quick overview, um, the, the chassis that we used to perform this, this test was uh, Jable's Mustang platform. Um, this was announced last year uh, at the OCP summit. This solution was just quickly used to bring in a, a different DCSCM 2.0 card. The remainder of the components remained the same. And just for a quick overview of the the, the platform and what DCMHS provides, this short video will cover all the different components.
Yep, so on the entire breakout there, you got to see um, the DCSCM components. If you had gotten to catch that through the video, it did play through kind of quickly. Um, so, so that was the only component we had changed within the server chassis. So here I'm going to hand it off whoops, to uh, Dorka, and he's going to cover the, the DCSCM solution from HP. Uh, thank you. I uh, just wanted to give you a brief introduction of A-Speed. Uh, we are a fabulous semiconductor company. We are located in Shinchu uh, with engineering offices in Taipei and San Jose. Um, our main focus on the DCSCM 2.0 was to actually demonstrate the capability of our devices together um, at the same time, help our internal teams to actually develop software and also work with our partners and be a reference design for our customers. Uh, that was the main intent. <clears throat> so being a uh, BMC vendor here, uh, we didn't have access to our HPM, uh, external HPM, because you know a lot of the things were in design. So we actually designed our own internal HPM, but it didn't have CPU infrastructure, but enough uh, um, capability to basically test our software and uh, help our partners test their software. And we had a debug board, which would actually help the software team uh, on their debugging. So what we show here is our development kit that uh, our partners and our customers get access to this. And it's completely based on the DCSCM uh, 2.0. And uh, <clears throat> this reference design was there. And then you know we all came together and I said, OK, why not basically show interoperability? Because that's the main you know, intent of uh, OCP's DCSCM uh, you know, initiative. So we thought we'll just demonstrate this capability uh, here with and share with the community. Uh, let's go to the next slide. So what we did was uh, we actually took the Jabal Mustang design and uh, we had a little interaction with our engineering teams and, and basically replaced that with our uh, ASP DCSM 2.0 board, um, and then uh, no, work with our partner AMI uh, actually to bring all of this together and actually get the uh, Mustang board uh, come up. Um, you know, it didn't take that long to actually bring that up. <coughs> uh, what we are doing next, uh, you know, uh, continuing to actually support o uh, OCP's DCSM 2.1. Um, we are um, in process of basically integrating uh, some of the functionality that is defined in the 2.0 specification. Um, for example, we are integrating the, uh, the LTPI and the LVDS uh, in the BMC so that way there's no external component needed. And then we also designed a, <clears throat> a AST1700, which is actually provides the uh, LTPI um, slave side of it and, and also uh, give you a seamless connection between the DCSCM and the HPM. Uh, this allows us to actually not only um, you know, provide the capability that's already defined in the LTPI, but we can actually go a little beyond that and make use of the already defined spec in LTPI and use the data frames uh, to actually enhance the capability on the HPM side. So this is you know, available in second half of 2024, so we hope to basically demonstrate this capability hopefully in the next OCP. So. OK, so what we wanted to cover a little bit more of is what were some of the challenges, what went well during this process of bringing in a third-party design component and, and being able to still power on a server. So. One of the things that we, because of the standards, the hardware was plug-in code ready. There was no risk of destroying components by powering them in, misaligned power rails, that type of thing. That was all covered and worked pretty well. The, the I squared C map, so for the whole system bus management piece of it, yeah. most of the, the pin definitions were aligned between the two cards even though they were designed independently. There's now, as many of you know, in DCSCM 2.0, multiple pins, or well, I guess multiple pins have multiple definitions. So a single pin could have up to three different uses as part of that standard. 
we got lucky on, on most of these in, in a line, but there were a few misalignments on the definition, so we did lose some minor functionality, but it wasn't enough to prevent us from powering on the system. Another piece is um, the, the LVDS frames. So for LTPI, um, the, the internal documentation at Jable didn't have everything covered immediately, and, and we quickly highlighted this, and we were able to get over the hurdle for the, the frame definitions within a couple of weeks and, and have full communication on the LTPI interface between uh, the, the two components such that our BMC had, had full access over that. So all of our GPIOs were working, our UARTs, and, and that type of thing. Um, th so the other thing we ran into is since we changed out the hardware root of trust module, we had to rebuild the firmware. So AMI took on that challenge, and, and he'll start to cover some of that here. Sure. Yeah. So we, we took a speed uh, DCCM card, and then we had to port the BIOS and BMC uh, to support the Jable through the DCSM card from ESP. And then we, we have the stack for 1060, AST 1060, and then we have to port and then have the DCSM card working with uh, Jable uh, design and then with the ASP uh, DCSM 2.0 card. So uh, we had to rebuild it, and then we have to do some porting changes according to the design. Uh, then uh, the LVDS interface uh, was started working, and then uh, we are able to do the PFR functionality. Now, uh, to allow this dynamic switching between the different cards, we, we also have a build orchestration that it is able to use the same card, and then uh, we will be able to identify what kind of uh, host system we have, and then we will be able to uh, build firmware dynamically and then uh, allow updating it. So we are going to have a follow-up session, so we'll talk about that in our call to action. So the goal here is like we need to have a flexible hardware root of trust solution that it is able to work with this uh, composable hardware. So that's what the uh, design aspects that we need to keep in mind. Okay, so uh, in the composable hardware, what is the role of PRAT? So the, this uh, OCP design allows interoperable uh, hardware, and uh, when we have components uh, uh, swapped like this, we, there comes a challenge that uh, identifying the component and then the uh, firmware management. So PRAT plays a critical role there on uh, so protecting those firmwares as well as attesting the, the components, uh, the device and peripheral. So uh, from a PRAT point of view, we have access to BIOS BMC SPI. So uh, the PFR functionality on top of the platform authentication to those firmware is not an issue. But uh, there comes a challenge that uh, not all the peripherals don't support uh, SPDM, so uh, we, we request the industry to uh, support that. And then uh, using that, we'll be able to identify the component peripherals and then make sure they are secure enough, the intended version of the firmware running, and then uh, we'll be able to manage uh, firmware update everything securely. Yeah. So, um, from a PRAT uh, firmware design uh, uh, point of view, like uh, uh, the PRAT firmware need to be flexible enough uh, to adapt the for hardware design. So uh, with the minimal porting, we should be able to uh, support this hardware. And then portable BIOS BMC uh, dependency, so meaning uh, when we have this multiple uh, DCMHS hardware and then we need to have the capabilities from the BIOS and BMC, with minimal porting effort, we should be able to adapt to those designs. And then, uh, so as we are going to talking about composable hardware, so there may be different vendors uh, of the silicon we may need to support. So we need to have vendor agnostics firmware design that can handle both uh, Intel, AMD, ARM architecture as a DC MHS hardware. So then for the peripherals, we, we request the uh, uh, SPDM capabilities. So the peripheral supports the SPDM responder, and then from PRAT point of view, we'll, we'll be able to do the requester capability and then make sure all the peripheral is uh, good enough uh, and secure enough. Then uh, to allow this transition smoothly, we also uh, working on the firmware build orchestration services where we are able to uh, cook the BIOS and BMC according to the uh, firmware design uh, based on the platform identity that we have. And then we will be able to support BIOS BMC PRAT firmware for configuration, build, deployment, uh, all the uh, needs that we have in this uh, composable design. 
Now, for the call to action, so uh, whoever is considering uh, this uh, DCMHS design, please join the DC uh, SEM working group uh, where uh, you can participate on 2.1 type definitions and all. And then there is going to be a follow-up session on designing DC MHS uh, session uh, by uh, 8.40. Um, then please try to attend that. And then we are going to talk about uh, at 11, uh, there is going to be enabling DCSM design and then this uh, build orchestration uh, uh, capabilities that we are working for with a dynamic firmware session. So please try to attend that. And then consider implementing PROT in all your uh, DCACM design and then DCAMHS design, where we will be able to achieve this uh, modular component supporting with uh, SPDM and uh, attestation, everything. Thank you. Yeah, so so uh, I guess we have some time for a few questions, if anybody has any. All right, thanks, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, thank you for the talk. Um, in your implementation of your PROT, uh, I'm curious what you elected to have the PROT do with the measurements it obtained from the peripherals. So um, we, we also have the interoperable. Uh, there, there is a, a demo that we have, like we can change the DC images. So when you change the host hardware, then you need to change the BIOS and BMC. And the PROT uh, with the same DCSM card, you should be able to identify those changes and then uh, support your uh, PFR functionality on top of that. OK, thanks. Thank you.